Another guy that I just can't get on board with, I think the, the cost is absolutely mind-blowing. Dalton Kincaid. Is he a guy that you're you're dabbling in, you're dropping some shares in best ball, or are you just avoiding completely? Very rarely. Occasionally, if I've got Josh Allen, then you know you have to buy into the idea that his passing game is going to be explosive. But you know, Dalton Kincaid's being drafted as the second highest rookie tight end over the last few years, only behind Kyle Pitts. Like it's really unusual for a rookie tight end to be drafted as high as Kincaid is. And all the talk is that they're going to use him more as a slot receiver than a true tight end. And perhaps if they completely ignore the tight end position, that becomes something that happens. But you look back at the stats with rookie tight ends over the past two decades to the turn of the millennium, like 384 tight ends have played in the NFL in their rookie season and recorded some form of a stat. Of those 384, only two of them averaged 10.0 points for their rookie season, you know, and then if you want to specify more like rounds one to three, where we're typically more interested in players with that good draft capital, 106 tight ends fall into that category. 25% of them fail to exceed even 1.9 half PPR points per game. 56% fail to put an average of 4.0 on the board. And basically only 20% of rookie tight ends managed to average over 6.0 half PPR points in their rookie season. And for me, I look at the number of white tight ends who are veterans who consistently do that. Dolan Kincaid, if you've got deep benches, that's fine. Stash Dolan Kincaid and perhaps down the stretch, he's coming up great for you. But Dolan Kincaid is not a week one star. I, that's, I think that's it for me is that, yeah, in best ball, I get it because you, you can attack the position with volume and you can kind of get by. In dynasty, I get it. I think in two, three years, Kincaid's going to be fantastic. But for redraft, I just can't see a world where he is a startable option until at best we're talking week seven, week eight. I think he's going to take some time to get up and running. And that's a best case scenario. So there's no world in which in a redraft league, I'm carrying a tight end six, seven weeks on my bench once we start getting into bye weeks just for the potential upside. I'd much rather go and buy someone else, draft someone else, and if needs be, I'll trade for Dalton Kincaid halfway through the year once he starts getting on the field and, and actually producing. 